Hi, welcome to another episode of MYD Global. I'm your host, Leanne hackman Carty. In today's episode, I'm interviewing Joel Meyer. Joel's with the Pacific Disaster Center based out of Maui, Hawaii. Uh, we're talking today about some of the interesting work that the Disaster Center is doing, in particular when it comes to geospatial data, helping people understand where disasters are, what's coming, how to prepare yourself. They do training, they have disaster apps. It's a really cool program. So stay tuned as I talk to Joel about all the work they're doing globally. Hey, Joel, how are you today? Well, I'm doing well, Leanne. Thank you for taking time. And I, as we were catching up earlier, we know it's an interesting time, uh, again, throughout North America and globally, in terms of all the hazards that we at PDC are tracking, but significantly relating to heat hazards, fire, and other things. Uh, thank you, Leanne, for having me. Well, before we get started in, into those topics, can you tell the audience just a little bit about yourself? Well, you know, I sure can. And, and, and as we kind of discussed Previously, um, myself, I've got about two and a half decades working at the nexus of applied public policy, technology, and innovation. And in the context, the last few years, with the renowned uh, Applied Science uh, Center, the Pacific Disaster Center, as you can tell from the background, we are based uh, in, in the U.S. state of Hawaii. Uh, we've been on Maui since the mid-90s, so well over 25 years. And, and again, we've uh, been innovating uh, for, for over over two and a half decades at the nexus of geospatial technologies, earth observation technologies, and now uh, artificial intelligence. And thank you so much. That's, that's very interesting. So tell me a little more about the Pacific Disaster Center, what you do. Oh, great. Well, like I said, um, we're busy. You know, We've done more work in the last year than we had in the previous two decades. Um, our history comes out of a disaster. Uh, I'm here, of course, on the island of Kauai, and in the early 90s, uh, a large hurricane um, really, really decimated this island uh, because, it, because it's in terms of preparedness and in terms of the civilian military aspects of the response, then uh, Senator Inouye, very powerful senator, um, said, let's, let's look at putting a center of excellence, not just in Washington, D.C., but, but on the Hawaiian island of Maui, which then had a supercomputing center. And thus, the Pacific Disaster Center was born. And since then, we've collaborated with pretty much every disaster management entity you've heard of. Of course, we are US based, but we partner with the United Nations globally. We signed a recent, um, a recent MOU with the IFRC, the Global Red Cross, Red Crescent Movement, the largest humanitarian organization with millions of volunteers globally. And of course, we work closely with um, the civilian military side, of course, Canadian government, the US government, the European colleagues who have been involved with things like the Dorian response, Lat uh, two years ago in the Bahamas, uh, and working with partners such as Salesforce and ESRI, the mapping company, and of course, even out of Canada, the, the, the company Blue Dot, where we have a relationship looking at the nexus of AI and public health. So we're really, uh, much as I always say, I'm often based in Geneva, and we are, we are uh, as I say at PDC, like a Swiss Army knife. We are an applied research center governed by the University of Hawaii, so we author authoritative, authoritative uh, uh, an academic, uh, academically informed science, we apply that science with geospatial technologies, innovative tools, and then we kind of push the frontier with industry uh, from Silicon Valley to Europe, uh, around the world, and working closely with open data centers of excellence, uh, like the humanitarian open street map, furthering that idea of localization and, of course, open data. So one of the things I know uh, from your website, uh, this disaster-aware technology, can you tell me just a little more about what that is? Well, thank you for asking. In fact, I always say, and for those that will be on the YouTube channel, we want you to, you might be looking on your phone, please go to either the Android store or the, your iPhone uh, store as well and download our disaster alert application. And disaster alert, over 2 million people are using that. And of course it's our platform um, called disaster aware with it. it's an umbrella platform, disaster alerts on your phone. We have an emergency operations platform that's part of that and our UN colleagues use that. So again, it brings in well over 5,000 data layers, everything from wow. you know, what are the hydrometeorologic aspects or what are, what are the existing drought conditions? And more importantly, uh, we have an entire team of response colleagues that are responding disasters globally, but we also do a lot of preparedness. As I say, we do Band-Aids, but we also do vitamins 
And we work closely with UNDRR and the World Bank, uh, the Global Facility you know, for Disaster uh, Response and Recovery to make sure we prepare and build that resilience uh, for places around the world and working, of course, globally. We have looked uh, over 20% of, of, of the world, we've done a, a subnational DRR study in partnership with, with local disaster managers. And of course, partnerships are key to what we do. And that's why, uh, uh, again, talking to you today is a great honor. So if I understand this correctly, so if I'm in some rural place in Canada, where mm -hmm. I'm based, um, if I download the disaster app, that's going to give me data as far as even my local area? It is. And like I said, I, I think we do the globe very well. We do partnership partner with colleagues around the world, uh, throughout many nations, of course, Canada as well. Um, but the, if you look on the app, we're very good at aggregating data, in this case, hazards, 18 types of hazards from landslides to floods to it oh. could be a snowstorm in the winter or a heat wave or a fire. We know there's fires in British Columbia ongoing right now and our, our, our hearts go out to colleagues there with the heat wave. We are aggregating and, and creating those alerts that go into the app. And so it's either on your phone, it could be on your desktop, or in our case, it's often on the big walls of an operations center, whether it's in Canada, Jakarta, Geneva, uh, throughout Africa. And so those are the solutions that we build. To, as we always say, it's not just us doing it. It's in partnership with the World Meteorologic Organization, the ITU uh, leading telecoms innovations. And really, as we say, getting the right data at the right time to the right people to make the right decision. That's what drives us. So would your uh, ideal stakeholder or partner be a, a state emergency management agency or a local manager or federal? What, what would be your ideal uh, customer or, or, or partner? Well, boy, you hit it on the head. And I would say, not to be trite, it would be all of them. Again, we work we work with uh, everything, again, from an, in the United, U.S. context and the Canadian context. It could be local, could be state or provincial, federal or international. We do address and help colleagues at all levels. Um, and as an applied research center, um, you know, we, our business is to get the right tools out to civil society and partners with industry as well. So like I said, these tools are free. Our funding often comes from things like the USAID and other partners to, to, to build capacities globally. And we really encourage your feedback and, and all, of the, all of the colleagues that you have that are part of your, as we say, family or ohana of disaster managers or people studying this. We also want to look to partner in the future. So is there, I'm just curious, these are, these are natural disaster type hazards that are, that are tracked. Um, it, it wouldn't be something like a pandemic or uh, mm. economic piece, like it would be strictly kind of an environmental type of thing, or is it well, is we, all kinds? We, we certainly, we do track, in fact, COVID, it was a big part. We partner, uh, you know, with, with what we call uh, the Defense Threat Reduction Agency, DITRA, the Defense Logistics Agency, CDC. I myself have been the liaison for PDC to the World Health Organization. So even though we often kind of discourage that natural, saying something is a natural, ha natural disaster, really that nexus of humans and hazards is this idea that we track that. And of course, um, that is something, so pandemic is certainly part of it. When you look on our disaster alert app, you'll see that we're pulling in the John Hopkins data. And that gives you that context that where COVID may be accelerating, we know even though in certain parts of North America and Europe, it has slowed, it's accelerating globally, but you, we don't get the luxury of saying the inbox of your saying that's just COVID or that's just yeah. a landslide or a cyclone. And as we prepare for uh, a very busy uh, hurricane season, we're tracking uh, a tropical storm currently uh, coming into the Caribbean we know that these will overlay. We also want to look, hey, when we look throughout these nations, uh, a place uh, like St. Vincent that has had an ongoing volcanic eruption now has a potential of a tropical storm. And of course, in the background is COVID. How do you evacuate people and, and make sure that they're safe in terms of COVID response as well? So we're able to combine all of those and those, those mapping layers help us make those advanced decisions and getting the data out to partners, whether it's on an app, on the wall, or even as what we call an API or a programming interface, where somebody at the Red Cross or at the UN can pull our data in and combine that. So we really have been very busy. And of course, with 18 hazards, um, and we do it globally, uh, that's where we, we look to partner with, with your, uh, again, your audience. And never a dull day, I would think, <laughs> exactly. in the office. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Unfortunately. Uh, so going forward, are there new things on the horizon, some, some opportunities that you're looking to expand upon? Just curious. 
Leanne, you, you nailed it. And like I said, we're really thankful. I know you said you're dialing in from Canada and our partnership with Blue Dot, which was, again, one of the first entities looking at that nexus of AI and health to see the outbreak uh, as a signal and noise coming out of Wuhan and the spread of this disease, uh, partnering with you know, uh, companies like Salesforce or partnering with centers of excellence like Harvard or UN partners that are part of the UN Global Pulse or the Acceleration Labs that are really saying that what are the new things we're going to do collectively. So that's where we're looking and that's where we're very excited. And again, for context, we are a global team. Uh, we have our main office in El Maui in Hawaii, in the U.S. state of Hawaii, but we have a presence, of course, colleagues that are based in Bangkok, uh, in Brazil. We did a, gr- we did a really interesting uh, uh, partnership and discussion last week uh, with the IFRC in the Americas out of Panama because we have a lot of experience in the Caribbean and Latin America. And even though our name says Pacific Disaster Center, of course, please follow us at PDC underscore global. We're Pacific Disaster Center, but we're global. And we really look forward to partnering, uh, partnering with your audience. That's awesome. So before we wrap up, is there just anything else you wanted to mention that perhaps I didn't ask you about? Uh, well, Leanne, thank you so much. And like I said, this is personal for all of us, you know, from, from the heat waves going on now to the, to the fires that we know. I'm a native Californian. And of course, we know um, I had family that, were, that had to uh, evacuate from Paradise two years ago, the large Paradise fire, then the most expensive uh, disaster of that year with 18,000 homes destroyed and 50,000 Americans becoming internally displaced. Um, we really are all learning as we, as we go forward and we need to collaborate. And, and having, having this platform to tell that story is important to us. We encourage people to use our tools, go to our website, of course, pdc.org, uh, follow us on Twitter, uh, again, P, you know, PDC underscore global, and of course on, on LinkedIn and Facebook as well. And again, keep up your great work and your advocacy. And Leanne, as we say, uh, mahalo and aloha to you. Uh, same to you. And thank you so much. I think after we're done, I'm going to go download the app. So oh, uh, fantastic. You can play with it. So thank you very much, Joe, for, for all you're doing and wish you best of luck. Oh, thank you so much. And aloha. Bye-bye. 